Uh, an entirely appropriate story for the pair of us. A power struggle between couples is taking place over the weekly shop. Researchers have discovered that people who feel undervalued or ignored in a relationship are likely to buy a brand opposite to what their partner might choose. And by doing that, alleviate their hidden frustrations. Right. Should we talk to relationship <laughs> journalist Nikki Hodgson, who joins both of us uh, from central London. I'm sure uh, you just read over me there. This is your own version of a power <laughs> struggle, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm not doing the shopping this time. After you. Go on. <laughs> Nikki Hodgson. So this is about a power struggle played out on the supermarket and kitchen shelves. What do you make of it? Yeah, it's a really interesting study done in America by two universities out there. And um, it's found that it, it, what's interesting is that it doesn't specify the gender of the participants. So we don't know whether it's women or men that tend to um, try and get one over the other partner more in this situation. We presume it's women because we know that statistically women do more of the household shopping. Um, but the idea is that uh, people who feel slightly undervalued in the relationship or feel that they don't have enough power get uh, one back by buying a, an alternate brand. Um, what's interesting though about the study is that apparently it's subconscious. So it's not that um, the partners are going to the supermarkets and thinking, okay, you haven't put the trash out. Um, we haven't had a good time in bed recently. So I'm going to you know, buy Pepsi and not Coke. Um, <laughs> apparently it's not conscious. Yeah, so subconscious, it's even got a name, oppositional uh, brand choices. Um, I wonder whether you think, as a relationship expert, Nikki, that this is a good way, way of dealing with conflict, or are we better just to confront it head on? Well, it's interesting. The researchers concluded that people actually felt better if they did um, enact one of these kind of petty gestures. But we know long term that uh, passive aggressiveness is not good for relationships. And... Um, there's, there's this kind of myth that happy couples never argue, and that's absolutely not true. It doesn't matter if you have an argument, it's how you get out of it that counts. And so if you're getting out of it by not ever venting your concerns, not being honest, not having a real communication about your problems in the relationship, these resentments build up. It's a well-known fact that people that tend to divorce often haven't had very many arguments. You know, it's not this um, stereotype of this ever uh, rowing couple. It's actually people that aren't able to say to one another, look, you really upset me this week, or this thing seems really small, but it really bothers me. And it's when you let go of these small things that they accumulate into the bigger ones and before you know it you're you're in a really difficult place in your relationship. Uh, Nikki I've got to admit I'm, I'm struggling with the mechanics of all of this if my partner you know came back every or week after week uh, after doing the Friday big shop and she got me you know the wrong brand of uh, lager shall we say just as a random example to pick out of the air that's <laughs> not random, yeah, yeah that's that's not going to make <laughs> us come closer together in my book frankly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I don't think it is either. But what it might do is allow her to feel more independent. I'm not saying, you know, I, I can't possibly comment on your relationship. Well, I've, let her, I've let her go and do the shopping. Surely that's independence <laughs> enough. just admitted right, that week all... after week you're going to have annoyed her. <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> certainly true. Yeah, I mean, as women, that's what we've all, you know, striven for, isn't it? To be able to do the shopping by ourselves. <laughs> um, I think there's just this idea that people that feel put upon tend to kind of like it allows them to let off steam in some way but you know it's really interesting if you go back to the advertising of the 1950s you know after the, the two world wars when women were literally back in the kitchen and how advertisers sold products to women which was you know on the, the pretext constantly of this will please your man I think we're way past that so <laughs> I found this study a little bit disconcerting that this may be a way that some people are letting off steam. Yeah, so subliminal messages in the shopping trolley that we all need to be looking out for and perhaps uh, reading more into it than we might have done in the past. Can you think of other examples, Nikki, of where people may subtly and subliminally be asserting power? Yeah, well, I think normally in um, the balance of domestic chores, you know, even the idea that there are jobs that women do and jobs that men do within a household can be quite constraining. You know, men are routinely expected to put the rubbish out because for some reason we somehow think that women don't get dirty or aren't, aren't, aren't allowed to dirty themselves. And that can also build up resentment. The fact that men are often... Um, expected to do you know DIY in the house or gardening or you know extreme manual labor which they might not like so I think it works it works in both directions but as I said you know the key thing is that it doesn't matter if you have different tasks or different responsibilities is that you feel happy with the tasks and responsibilities you have yeah do you do your fair share of jobs I do I do a lot of stuff I have to say I'm, I'm very happy
<laughs> I'm not so sure about her, of course, but, you know, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Uh, Nikki Hodgson, uh, thanks very much for joining us here on Sky News. It's definitely not something that would ever, ever affect us, is it, you know? Still to come on Sky News. <laughs>